My name is Tom Boley. This is Hayward, Wisconsin. Hayward was once a famed fishing hotspot. Together, we are going to put Hayward back on the map as a serious fishing destination. This film is brought to you by Hayward Lakes Visitors and Convention Bureau, Treeland Resorts on the Ship of Flowage, Hayward Area Chamber of Commerce, Ringer Small Engine and Power Sports. What is going on guys? We're out here at the Chippewa Flowage today out of Treelands Resort. We're going to be doing some fall crappie fishing. Very exciting stuff. It's early fall right now. Fish are starting to set up, um, but we're going to add a little twist to this one. Um, I wrote about 20 different crappie fishing techniques down in this hat. We're going to pick randomly for them from a hat. I Google searched crappie fishing methods and uh, this is the first 20 that came up. So the rules of the game are whatever we pick, we absolutely have to do. Uh, just to be fair. So whatever I pick, that's what we're gonna do first. Um, we're gonna shuffle that, by the way, this is the lucky LOL at your swag hat. You might remember this hat from such films as fidget spinner walleye fishing. Anyways, let's get to it. What do we got first? What are we going to be doing? We have drop shot. That's a good one to start with. Not too hard, not too easy. A uh, technique that a lot of guys overlook. So uh, we're doing that first, stay tuned. So right now what we are doing is hunting around looking for these fish. I have not been out here in a long time, um, especially crappie fishing. So I'm kind of scouting around right now looking for some of these 16, kind of like 13 to 20 foot humps uh, near river channel, stuff like that. With the drop shot, I got to be sitting pretty still. So what I'm actually going to do is, I just found some fish, I'm pulling up to the hump right now. I'm gonna spot lock my boat basically directly over the fish so I can fish that drop shot right in my sonar cone or close to it. I wanna be as close to the fish as I can. And right there is looking pretty decent. All right, when I'm rigging up a drop shot for crappie fishing, uh, most of the time I'm using a one inch gulp on the flowage just because our crappies aren't super big here. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all relative to how far up the fish are. You know, if the fish are six feet off bottom, I'm not gonna drop shot, that's just too far. If they're on the bottom to like three feet up, I'll consider drop shotting. Um, so I've got a small, I don't even know what size that is, a 10, number 10 or a 12, uh, just small hook. Um, down to a 3 8 ounce weight. I like to have a heavy weight just so I can kind of keep that weight real stationary. Um, so basically, I'm gonna drop down real close to the boat here keeping it right in my sonar cone. I was marking a bunch of fish, now I'm not really. So basically I'm just gonna shake that thing, keeping my line just barely slack. And I'm just kind of watching for when a fish comes in. And when I see a fish come in, um, a big one that's gonna get a lot of bites for is if you just kind of drop your rod tip and let that line go totally slack. If you're fishing braid, you're gonna feel that, that drop shot just pop real tight, um, just real sharp pop, and then you just kind of set the hook. Oh, there's one right away. There he is. He's not a bad one to whoa, start the day off. He's about a 10 inch fish. You can see how quick it is just to grab him on that drop shot. Super efficient way to fish. Uh, the biggest benefit of it, I would say, is you know exactly how deep you are. Uh, there's no setting a slip bobber where you're like, yeah, I'm somewhere you know close to the bottom. Um, with this, I mean, this is about a two foot lead. I am on. I mean, I'm two feet off the bottom exactly at all times. Uh, so we're gonna get one more fish, and then we're on to the next technique. Here's one thinking about it. There he is. This feels like a bluegill. Which it is. Not a bad bluegill though. He's actually a pretty nice bluegill for the flowage. All right, drop shot. Complete, we're done with that. What, what is next? Good question. We're gonna shuffle her up real quick. Remember, the rules of the game have to do every single one we choose, uh, no exceptions. 
spider rigging. I'm gonna tell you right now, we are not gonna do that today. Mainly because I don't wanna do that, and I don't wanna retie about 30 different things. Back to the next one. What do we have? Top water. Also not gonna do that one. I probably should have picked the top five things to do. Anyways. Jigging wrap. Ooh, this one could be interesting. Um, most of the time I like doing these later in the fall or kind of when fish are a little more suspended. It's a little tougher to pick fish off the bottom with a jigging wrap, but we will give it a shot because I love jigging wraps. So let's go catch one on a jigging wrap. Well, it's become very apparent that I cannot not have this in my sonar cone and catch one. Um, we pretty much got to see them when they're moving up onto it. If this is more of a suspended scenario, it'd be a lot easier to just kind of fish at the depth of the fish and um, let them come up and grab it. But uh, these fish are just kind of spread out on this point. And unless I can see the fish interacting with the bait, it's been challenging to catch one. Well, I've had a whole bunch of short bites. Um, the fish just kind of rising up and you just kind of feel a line go and then there's no weight on it. Um, a great way to combat that is your regular jigging wraps just kind of it's just a piece of lead. They gotta be pretty jazzed up to grab that. I don't even know what size this is. I believe it's just the smallest size they make. Um, a great way to combat that when you're getting these kind of short bites on baits like this. A good friend of mine actually, Andrew, makes a bait called uh, Beaver Tail. Um, it's just, it's actual beaver tail. And what I'll do, this is the smaller size of it. I'll just take one of these and uh, this works with a lot of your like ripping wraps too um, that I found when I'm fishing for crappies. I'll take one of these and just, uh, where is it at here? I'll take one of these and just put a small piece of it on that center hook of it. Um, it just kind of gives those fish a target to kind of grab at. Most of the time you actually do hook them um, on this middle hook. Uh, so a piece of gulp works. Uh, this beaver tail is a great product. It stays on a lot longer. Um, so we're gonna see if we can't get it done now that we are baited up properly. Here comes a couple. Fish on. Ooh, nice crappie there. Finally got it done on the jigging wrap. I could not sit over those fish uh, with spot lock. I pretty much had to fish it exactly like a sonar bait. Um, drop it down, see right where those fish are at, and uh, kind of work the fish as if uh, you know, you're fishing for one at a time, seeing when they're kind of rising up on the graph. And when they'd rise up on the graph, basically I'd just kind of go from this kind of a motion to stalling it out and just kind of bouncing it. And that's when I was getting bites with this one. Probably not the preferred way I'd go about crappie fishing right now, but uh, nevertheless, it is effective. This gets really effective actually late in the fall on a lot of lakes that have very big crappies for picking out uh, a lot of the nicer fish out of the schools. So maybe we'll do that later this year. We'll see. All right, jigging wrap complete. Jigging wrap drop shot done. We are on to the next one. What do we have? This looks like a big one. Holy cow. Don't worry about failures. Worry about chances you miss if you don't even try. That's not even a way to catch crappies. That's just sound advice. We have, oh, yes. Cane pole crappie fishing. Now this is a spring technique most of the time, but we're gonna see if we can't get it done um, in some deeper depths today with a cane pole. Luckily for me, I brought a cane pole today, um, so let's go see if we can't catch a crappie on a cane pole in the fall. I feel like I should be getting bites. There's a lot of fish down there. I thought this was gonna be one of the easier ones, honestly. Like, there's something about this setup they don't like. Or is it just that you cannot feel a bite at all? I'm not sure which one it is. I just really feel like I should be getting bites. And I'm not. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I thought this was going to be the easiest one yet. But I have been at it for approximately an hour now. And I've caught two fish off camera with the cane pole. I am finally on some. Or I think I can catch one on command, so we're gonna see.
and there it is. And it is small. Whoa. But I don't even care. The cane pole is extremely inefficient this time of year. Just because the depths are too much. So we are done with that. What are we gonna do? One fell out. Have we already done this one? That's cane pole. We're definitely not doing that again. What is next? What is it gonna be? Finally, the easy one, slip bobber. We're probably gonna end the day fishing with a slip bobber. It's my favorite way to fish crappies this time of year. Probably the most efficient way to fish crappies this, well really the whole season as a whole. You can alternate your depth, you know exactly where you're fishing, stuff like that. So we might do some of that. I have not kept any fish today, so we might keep a few crappies. I need to talk about some structure. Um, and then we might have a little fish fry. I don't know yet. We'll see. Fish on. What is it? Nice crappie. It's about a nine incher. We can fillet him up. I always hate keeping a lot of the big ones. It's actually better to keep a lot of these kind of mid-range fish. There we go. Another nice one. He's about a 11 inch, I'd say. Another one. This will be the final one. And I do believe we have enough for a fish fry. And with that, we're gonna go do a shore lunch because I am starving. And I had a bunch of drone batteries die. Spent about half the day waiting for those to charge. And I am hungry. Let's go. Well worth it. Brought zero food today, so this was an absolute must. Um, but instead of watching me scarf down a ginormous plate of fish, let's go out and take a look at some of the finer points on where to find crappies this time of year. Um, let's say late September into that early November, uh, late fall period. Let's take a look. Fall is officially here, and you know what that means. It's time to put on your favorite flannel shirt, buy some expensive coffee, maybe some pumpkin pie, carve a pumpkin. What else is there to do in the fall? Well, fall crappie fishing. It's time to talk structure. Now, uh, this time of year, most of these fish are starting their fall migrations across the Midwest. What you can do to shorten the amount of time you're gonna spend looking for these fish, number one, look at a map. Whether it's a paper map, whether it's uh, you know your, your chart plotter, whatever it may be, there's a lot of simple ways to cut down the time you're gonna spend looking for these fish. First, we're gonna look at a map. On the chip of flowage, what you're gonna wanna do is look at a lot of the pink dotted lines. What are those? Pink dotted lines mean river channels. Basically what you want, that is, it's deep water in a flowage. Um, deep water and uh, you know, typically a basin area. So once I've located those areas, typically what I'll do is I'll start looking for structure within those areas. Early in the fall, a lot of these fish relating to deep water are gonna be staged up on points, humps, um, pieces of shallower structure near these deep water basins. And uh, those are the areas typically mid-September into, oh, mid-October, late October, these fish will be on, um, as well as cribs in these same areas. Later in the fall, um, kind of well into the fall, that water is below 50 at this point, you're gonna start seeing fish congregating, suspended in the water column, um, in these deeper holes. It's gonna be more of a wintering pattern at this point in time. Um, so like I said, you, know, you start out working these structures around the deep water, eventually you end up sliding more into these actual basin areas, and uh, you know that's basically what you're targeting. On that note, we are gonna call it a wrap for today. Shore lunch was delicious. I hope you guys learned a lot about crappie fishing. We'll probably roll some sweet drone shots of the flowage getting out of here. And if you guys have not already, what I'm gonna need you to do is subscribe to this channel, Make sure you watch this video, this video, and this video, and stay tuned for more.